welcome back. In this episode, we're going to be learning about the curriculum. Curriculum emerges from the play of children. It is what happens including all the activities, materials, and equipment used. Curriculum may be planned or accidental. It may emerge from the teacher's interactions with the child. Even room arrangements can reflect the curriculum. So join me, Ms. Trot, as we learn all about the curriculum. A developmentally appropriate early childhood curriculum is evidence-based and is consistent with research on how children develop and learn. It consists of a wide range of concepts, experiences, and materials designed to meet the developmental needs of a group of children. These include their social, emotional, physical, and cognitive needs. The curriculum also considers and respects families' culture and linguistic background. The curriculum should provide the children an opportunity to make meaningful choices when requiring detailed planning on the teacher's part. Before the curriculum can be planned, Reviewing of your state's early standards needs to happen. These are guidelines for educators and caregivers to use that inform their decisions about the approach to curriculum development. The purpose of the early learning standards is to improve professional practice by promoting high quality learning environments for young children. The standards reflect all domains and subdomains of early learning development. They outline required learning by showing what children should know and be able to do. Alabama began to redesign their early learning standards in 2018, and the result is the 2020 Alabama Standards for Early Learning and Development, also called the ACELs. This book creates a seamless continuum of developmental and learning expectations for Alabama's children, birth to age five and a clear, consistent vision for ensuring all children realizing their greatest potential. Next, the goal of the program needs to be determined. In an early childhood program, the program goals outline the philosophy of the center. Some people describe the goals as the why of the curriculum. Program goals based on child development focuses on the whole child. These goals are broad and relate to all four areas of development since developmentally appropriate curriculum considers the whole child. Every child is unique, even though there are many similarities within age groups. For this reason, assessment is necessary to plan a curriculum that is both individualized and developmentally appropriate for all areas of learning. The first assessment supplies data on what the children already know and what skills they have achieved. It should identify their needs and interests. Learning is seen as a constant process of exploring and questioning the environment. A hands-on curriculum is stressed. All, all four areas of child development, social, emotional, physical, and cognitive, are included. A wide range of age-appropriate materials, supplies, and experiences are used to enrich the environment. The physical environment is carefully planned and prepared with the content for learning. A good curriculum will involve direct and indirect learning experiences with teachable moments sprinkled in. As you begin planning a curriculum, there are a number of important factors to keep in mind. First, you must decide what skill and content to cover. Three basic questions can help you with this process. First, is the information worth knowing? Second, is the information testable? Meaning, can a child see firsthand if something is true? And third, is the information developmentally appropriate? The next factor is that learning activities selected need to be balanced. A good curriculum includes a balance of structure as well as unstructured learning activities. Active and quiet learning activities must be balanced too. Another factor when planning activities for young children is to consider the diversity of individual learning styles. Basic learning styles include field sensitive, field independent, visual learners, and auditory learners. The third factor to consider are the learning characteristics of the children in the classroom. Some work slowly and others quickly. Some children are attentive while others bore easily. Evaluate children's learning characteristics in relation to your own and keep this in mind when you're planning the curriculum. One more factor to consider is respecting cultural diversity. 
cultural diversity needs to be infused into teaching strategies, the learning environment, and children's experiences. Classrooms need to be individually appropriate for every child. After considering your curriculum approach, theme, concepts, vocabulary skills, and activities, written plans need to be developed. Many centers require two types of written plans. A block plan is an overall view of the curriculum. It outlines a general plan. A lesson plan is more detailed than a block plan and may list one or more early learning standards. Lesson plans will contain the following, early learning standards, developmental goals, learning expectations, materials needed, motivation, procedures, closer transition, and self-evaluation. Self-evaluation is the only component written after the lesson is conducted. This process involves three steps. First, evaluating the learning experience. Second, evaluating the children and their responses. And third, evaluating your own teaching strategies. Evaluating will improve your teaching skills as well as the curriculum. Lesson plans help teachers organize their teaching. Writing good lesson plans is a skill that is learned much like other skills. With practice, you will gradually increase your skills. Now, let's review what we've learned. A developmentally appropriate early childhood curriculum consists of a wide range of concepts, experiences, and materials designed to meet the developmental needs of a group of children. Before the curriculum can be planned, state early learning standards need to be reviewed. After that, the goals of the center's program need to be determined. Assessment identifies children's needs, interests, strengths, and capabilities. As you plan the curriculum, you must first decide what information you want to cover. You will also want to balance the learning activities and consider individual learning styles and characteristics. Activities, concepts, and vocabulary words are selected based on a theme. Written plans are developed that include a variety of activities for all the classroom activity areas. The final step is evaluation to improve teaching plans, skills, and curriculum. That wraps us up for this episode. You can learn more about this topic by reviewing the resources posted in your course. As always, if you have any questions, please contact me or your instructor. Thanks for joining me, Ms. Trot. As we learned all about the curriculum. See you next time.